Um, yeah, you, you just really quickly transformed that into the um, kind of a black tank yeah, top. Yeah, into a black uh, tank top, but with a twist, you know, it, uh, it's painted from scratch. Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm Dean and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com and today we're going to take you beyond the Photoshop basics. So we have Christian Bentalam with us today, the Filipino phenom, book cover artist extraordinaire, and we're looking at a, is this a pre-made book cover you've done here? Uh, yeah, uh, the one that you can see on the, uh, on the screen is, uh, yep. uh, was a pre-made cover that I, that I did for an event okay. uh, a, a month ago. And yeah. for the guys watching, they might they might not know what a pre-made means. Can you just explain what a pre-made book cover, what that actually means? Yeah, uh, sure. The reason why it's why, why it is called pre-made is uh, you, you'll create something from your uh, own creativity, from your own ideas, something that you want to work with, and then when you are done and when you are you think that it's good enough, you can sell it. If someone if someone is in, uh, interested, someone can just buy it. Okay, yeah. so what I get from that is that instead of doing it as a commission for a client, you want to do an artwork, you create it, and then you put it out on the marketplace saying, would you like, would anybody like to buy this artwork? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, that's cool. Um, so you are a user of the uh, Daz 3D software for creating figures and creatures and elements for your book cover illustrations. Can you just tell me a bit about your Daz workflow and, and why you choose to use Daz alongside your Photoshop work? It helps me uh, with a lot of, uh, in terms of, you know, a character design. You can just play with poses, something that you can uh, play around with. Uh, for example, uh, an order wants uh, a dragon concept. Yeah, uh, Daz can give you a 3D assets of a dragon. Then you can just play around with their software, software like poses, like their uh, color of skin, everything. So uh, it really, uh, really helps me uh, a lot. You like my... to have the freedom of having the exact figure at the exact pose that you want, and you usually kind of bring this into Photoshop and mix it up with photo stock elements. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do it a lot of time, like uh, mixing a lot of. Uh, painting, uh, doing a lot of polishing on Photoshop. And can I ask, do you use Daz for every project you do? Uh, not most of the time because, you know, I, I I usually use Photo because it's more realistic than Daz. I have no problem with Daz because it really helps me. But sometimes if it's a bit complicated, uh, for example, order, the order is looking for something very specific post. That's the time I use Daz. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And what percentage of your projects would you say you use Daz, um, fit Daz elements for? Okay. Uh, based on percentage, I think it's kind of like uh, 30% and then the rest are more on photos. And one thing I always notice about your workflow is that digital overpainting is a really big part of what you do. So your style to me is is a hybrid style of photo manipulation mixed with digital painting. Can you tell me a bit about that, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, in this industry, I mean, uh, in book cover industry, uh, uh, it, it is really complex. But what I figured out during these years, uh, for, uh, for the past few years, most authors love the painted effect on every concept. Uh, for example, for fantasy, they yep. love the, the the touch of being uh, looking like painted painted uh, style. They love it so much. So, what I did is uh, I studied some fundamentals of painting. Yep. So that's the reason why I could apply it on every covers that I've been doing. For example, as you can see here, uh, the the model ha originally had a white tank top. Uh, yeah, oh, you, oh. you just really quickly transformed that into the um, kind of a black tank top. Yeah, into a black uh, tank top, but with a twist, you know, it, uh, it's painted from scratch instead of playing just around of around the brightness. or. You contrast. just used the rough outline to get the shape. You didn't use yes. any elements from the original. You said, right, that's the shape of the tank yeah. top. That looks right. Now you I'm going to make right. it black to fit the theme of the cover. Um, and this is where you truly excel. You're the best of all of us when it comes to working with hair. Uh, because you've had the most practice, obviously. But 
the way you do this, you, you don't really retain any of the original hair details, do you? In this particular piece, because I watched it before, mm -hmm. you, it's a complete digital overpaint here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, because if you, if you notice a while ago, the, the model has, uh, you know, a very weird uh, shape of the hair. Absolutely, the yep. So what I had to do is, you know, uh, play around with it, like making my own style of, or, or, or my preference of hair. So as you can see here, I'm painting uh, on top of it, more on from scratch. Yeah. So yeah, you, you want to create a more pleasing shape. And one thing that you do a lot is a kind of uh, wind blown look. So it's dramatic. She's in an outdoor scene. The wind is blowing. There's magic and dragons going on. And yeah. it's, it's telling the story, isn't it? You're, you're, you're telling the story. Yes, yes, yes. And most of the others uh, want a blowing hair effect, like dramatic effect. And so that's what I've been doing for most of the time. So, yeah. And you do a lot more uh, fantasy and urban fantasy covers than any other genre, don't you? Uh, actually, I, I, I started doing uh, a lot of uh, apocalyptic styles, apocalyptic genre. Uh, uh, some horrors but yep uh they always ask me to do fantasy stuff so so the demand is high for this stuff so that's the reason why i've been i keep on doing this you know but the thing is there's nothing wrong with that because you're really really good at it and to to yeah. be a, a freelance digital artist to be in very high demand because i know the demand and pressure that you're under is a very rare thing there are not many artists in the world that have a waiting list um, of clients <laughs> the same as what you do. So I, I think that's amazing. Thanks, man. It's a good thing. Always be proud of your fantasy work, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, because uh, as far as you can remember, I started doing a lot of uh, dark stuff. Yep, and I remember. So, uh, I mean, this genre for me is kind of like... Uh, still fresh for me because uh, i mean i just started started uh concentrating on this stuff so i realized uh it's kind of fun because there's a lot of demand in this uh in this genre yeah it is a it's a crazy uh, for the guys watching if you're not familiar with this channel i used to be a book cover artist as well that's how i became friends with christian <laughs> and everything he's saying is, is right um me personally all i ever did was horror and sci-fi and dark fiction and that's where the work was for me because it was the genre i was good at i couldn't do anything like this but i could do unique looking horror artwork so i basically went to where the work is and that's the same for you christian the work's coming in why the hell not yeah that's true as long as you know uh because you have a family to feed <laughs> okay <laughs> We've got some more stock elements coming in. We've just been talking over, all over this. We haven't been talking about your Photoshop process. So you've got that. As, why is that a smart object, those scales? Why did he choose to make that a smart object? Uh, sorry? The scales on the lady's arm, why did he choose mm -hmm. to make that a smart object? Uh, okay. Based from what I've, uh, I've understand with smart objects, because if you use smart objects or if you convert the, the layer as a uh, smart object uh, yep. whenever you resize it or doing some uh, perspective or something it's not gonna be uh, pixelated the the quality of it will remain will you can remain. revert back to the original state so that is non-destructive yes that is correct so uh, whenever i see that this would be the final form uh that's the time i rasterize it because you know smart objects uh it eats a lot of space you know uh, i mean if you have a lot of smart objects on your psd file the file of your psd would gonna be huge yeah yeah i i very very rarely um i can count on one hand the number of times i've used smart objects mm -hmm. in my workflows so i know they're good and i've recently kind of started using them do you know what i do instead of using smart objects what, what do you do i just duplicate the layer <laughs> I duplicate the layer, hide the duplicate, and if things go wrong or I want to change anything, I just delete 
that edited <laughs> layer and then go back to the original. I don't know whether that would be larger or smaller file size than using a smart object. What do you think? I think uh, I think we do the same stuff as well. Sometimes I forgot to delete it. Sometimes I duplicate. Uh, the same thing and then just delete it when whenever i think it's uh it's done or something uh if you i think if you did duplicate a lot of players it's still gonna eat up space yeah but the good thing is is that computers these days are just getting better and better hard drive space is cheaper and cheaper um <laughs> so we, we could do a lot more than what we could you know and i'm, yeah. going, I'm going back 20 years 22 years because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when a computer could barely handle, you know, a five layer <laughs> composite. A lot of computers nowadays are supercomputers. <laughs> I'll tell you what so I've been struggling with editing video. Um, I had a 32 gig iMac and yeah, that was struggling. Mm -hmm. That's 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 where things get really difficult. You just updated your computer, right? Uh, yep, I've got an M1, um, one of the small uh, Mac minis, but I will mm -hmm. be getting an iMac Pro when it comes out because I'm a bit of a Mac fanboy when it comes to desktops. Ah. So <laughs> I'm just going to ask some questions now about these background elements. You yeah, sure. threw in your background. I like the fact that you use layer groups. That's what I do. Always happy to see that. Mm -hmm. And you, what you usually do, because I watch so many of your videos now, I'm kind of getting familiar with your workflow. You use like a large soft edge brush to introduce kind of backlighting behind the model at times, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, That's can you true. explain a bit about that, please? You know, for uh, dramatic uh, purposes, for dramatic lighting, so that I can play around with some reflection uh, lighting uh, for the model. You know, the backlight, uh, yep. if you're familiar with that, because uh if i do that kind of thing I, I can play around with a lot of stuff like uh if you can see here uh i'm doing a we call this like an eclipse it's like a, or something um yeah so the the darkness that you did around the background we call that like a, a vignette yeah. and it kind of shapes and pulls the eye into the center of the image because your your stock models in the center and you're using the background lighting to kind mm -hmm. of guide the eye into the center important part of the image don't you yeah uh, yeah uh, that's one of the reason as well yeah i just remember it to emphasize more of the model that's the reason why i put so much light behind uh, every model uh, that i've been working it so that uh so the the model on the front will stand out even more yep rather rather than if you have a darker background behind her or something so I think that's one of my key elements to produce uh, uh, by producing a lot of uh, uh, vivid uh, covers. Yeah, one more, thing I find amazing is how it looks so artistic and stylized with only just a very few brush strokes. You manage mm -hmm. to to already, even, it, we're not finished yet, but it, I can already see from afar because um, we're zoomed out, that that already looks like a, a very stylized kind of painted image. It's, it's crazy mm -hmm. how you do it, man. <laughs> Thank you. It's hard to explain every part of it because uh, I usually just play around with it, and then yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just I'm just luckily well, you know, I end up something like you know a better concert or something. A lot of what you do is muscle memory and repetition where you do so many of these covers and so many of these illustrations you're, you you <laughs> kind of get into a flow state and do it in autopilot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's correct. More guys, like my muscle memory. You guys watching at home, if you're getting value from this video, please do throw us a like or subscribe. It's free, easy and really supports the channel. One thing that I want to say, Christian, is in our comments, whenever you do a video, we have more requests for you to make video tutorials teaching this <laughs> uh, fantasy overpainted style more than anyone else on the team. Can you tell us, will we be getting a course from you next year? Uh, the reason of my hold back is because my, of, of my language barrier. You know, I, I think I told you this a long time ago, but I think I'm more confident right, right now. So, and then uh, I all I also see a lot of requests on the comments. Yeah, it's amazing. Loads, feel, loads and loads. 
uh, which I appreciated appreciated it a lot. So I'm trying my best to produce some, or I think a tutorial this uh, year or probably early next year. Or... Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Christian. We'll do it together and then language won't be an issue. You say this is a course, this is what we're going to be doing. And then we'll do the course like this. We'll talk, we'll do the artwork in real time, and then you don't have to worry about language. And how, how about that? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's going to be a big help for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm here to do is, is help the team. And um, yeah, guys, you. if you want to see a video tutorial, uh, a video training bundle from Christian that explains all of these techniques from beginning to end in real time, Give us a shout out in the comments below. If we get enough comments, then we'll go ahead and we'll speed that up and we'll get it out a lot faster. And not only video tutorials full length, but we'll also throw in loads of stock images as well because we own a stock photography company. So we could do things like that. Yeah, I'm actually excited about it. <laughs> You'll be then... wild, man. We get, we get so countless comments. People ask for it all the time. <laughs> Yeah, they're so patient. <laughs> like I, I think they've been waiting for quite some time. Like, okay, so, yeah. uh, Christian, I've seen mm -hmm. you try some things and then decide that you didn't like it, and then you deleted it, and then you tried something again. Initially, you had scales on mm -hmm. the tattoo arm. Um, mm -hmm. You tried one dragon. You tried like I'm, I'm seeing it's really interesting, and I love it when people keep in the kind of the full process that like, we can't call them mistakes because it's not a mistake it's a process and yeah, i love the, i love the fact that you keep that in i literally in, in, uh, included included in on my video because uh i think every every everyone is thinking like whenever you create a concept it, it is perfect no i mean every artist has a lot of uh errors as well uh, i mean play uh they used to play around Yep. until they get the right concept or something uh that's what i that's what i do most of the time play around with the concept and and find the perfect fit for it yeah absolutely and where would you sell this cover so you said it's a pre-made you've done it on spec mm -hmm. you created the art without with the ambition of selling it to someone where exactly would you sell this piece tell the guys watching today as, uh, as far as you know i do have a market already yep since from the beginning uh because you know uh, i have a lot of orders the I, I have a lot of orders that i've worked with uh they are all friends of my uh on my facebook so what i had to do is create the group and then invite yep. them over so that they can just see every covers or every premise that i that i want to sell so that's the time that uh when they when they see it and they they think that this pre-made matches their stories that's the time the, that they're gonna buy it if the if this uh, uh, if their story is matching the concept itself. Okay. Yep. So you have uh, an audience there ready to be to view your work, and because it's a large audience that you built up over the time, then mm -hmm. there there are people there that are interested in your work, and you know that you can sell a certain amount of pre-mades or gain a certain amount of commissions. Yeah. So basically, uh, I started uh, doing this. Uh, I mean, this group, and everything changes. Like it's better, a lot of better. You don't have to post somewhere. Yeah, you have to do yeah. It. You own yeah. the audience. Um, it, it's your platform. Um, we're coming up yes. to the end of this question. I just want to mm -hmm. say thank you for sharing your experiences with us. I <laughs> always learn something new. Always learn yeah, something I from the workflow and um yeah i'm really looking forward to the course i really hope i made sense <laughs> you always make sense guys if you enjoyed this conversation with christian uh, another one will be coming up right here and that will do it for today's video guys thank you for tuning in i'll catch you at the next one see you then